You are now listening to the A Dose of Disruption podcast, powered by Experian. Weekly compelling conversations on making money moves and growing your network. The place where you can learn to be you and do you all at the same time. I'm your host, Shelly Bell. And now, let's see what this week's Level Up looks like. All right, here, here we go, y'all. Here is another episode of A Dose of Disruption. And this special edition that we're doing, Shelly Fix My Pitch, uh, let me know how y'all feel about it. I mean, send me some notes on social because this would be the third one that you're hearing so far. And I'm trying it out. And I want to see if, if people like it. I love for founders to share. And also, it's great to just hear some of the back-end conversations that you may not get to hear on some of the platforms when it comes to like feedback and helping people understand how to raise more capital, get this money, okay? So today, we have a special guest. I really love her company, Michelle Smart, um, Bags to Butterflies. And you're going to hear all about what Bags to Butterfly does in a second when you hear her pitch. Michelle, how you feeling? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Shelly. Appreciate you. Yeah, for sure. All right. You ready to get this pitch going? I'm ready to get it going. Thank you. All right. Okay. So um, go ahead and share your screen and then we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to put three minutes on the clock. Women are the fastest growing population behind bars in the United States. Can you imagine spending 10, 20, 30 years of your life behind bars and now you're coming home? Where are the jobs? Where are the opportunities for women? Since the early 1980s, the the number of incarcerated women has increased nearly 700%. The cost of housing inmates here in Michigan, it's $98 per day and over $36,000 per year, per year. Bags to Butterflies is a Detroit-based social enterprise that empowers formerly incarcerated women with transitional employment, with resources, and a wonderful caring network to assist the ladies on their journey to success immediately upon returning to the community from incarceration. We are taking what we believe is an innovative approach to create jobs, and we're doing this using a very common accessory, a handbag. Our handbags are one of a kind. They are created using repurposed wood. We selected this material to demonstrate how something or someone deemed as having no value can be transformed into something new and something beautiful. The ladies are shown how that same transformation can take place in their lives with commitment and dedication on their part. Our handbags are currently sold in retail stores here in the Detroit area. We also sell them on our website, bags2butterflies.com. Most of the women who've come to our organization, this is their very first job. And upon returning to the community, they've expressed to us that housing and employment are two of the barriers that they face when they return to the community. Through a focus group, we determined that this is a very, this is very much needed and, and ensuring that the ladies return to the community and are successful on their journey. Some of the ladies, these are some of the ladies who have gone through our program. Miss Charlene served 41 years in prison. Miss Tanya served 44 years in prison. And they have both transformed their lives while being part of the program. At Bags to Butterflies, not only do we create cool handbags, we make make it possible for anyone to transition into the community and transform their lives. Thank you. One of the things that, that I would say, Michelle, is that this is so much bigger than you're communicating. I mean, it is just so much more important then you're communicating. Yes. Because one of the things that I don't, that I didn't hear was like, well, what is the impact? If you, you know, you, you would have like completely sold me if you just would have gave me a stat, like for every bag, you know, we are feeding 10 children who were, you know, who, who have parents who were incarcerated, you know, like, or yes. like for, you know, for every five bags we sell, 
we are infusing X amount of capital into the community or we didn't, we are getting X amount of people back to work or we are getting, you know what I mean? Like, like I think yeah. that I would have loved to hear what is happening as a result. And I think you, you focused a lot on making the case for you to exist. Like this yes. is necessary. People are in jail. People are getting out of jail. Don't have hope. They need to create bags. Also, okay. I wanted to hear about revenue revenue splits you know or like how are you doing this so are you and do they is this a sustainable job or is this a one-off so the the when the ladies come home they are coming into transitional employment so it is a nine-month initiative so the ladies are with us we actually expanded it to one year so they're with us for one year and during that that one year they're actually getting job skills they're getting life skills and i probably should have added this in our in my pitch um, the ladies also are have a, a life coach, so they have someone that they can really talk to about issues with their families. You know, a lot of them are coming home and thinking that the families are going to be waiting with open arms, and that's just not the case. In addition to that, financial management, we work with a local bank who... Um, teaches them how to open up a savings account, how to um, balance their, their savings account. And um, we have a health and wellness coach who talks about healthy eating. They work out, they um, have a yoga class that they do. They, they lift weights. So they come, she comes to our facility and just helps them with, you know, so this uh, is a full on transitional program. Yes. Okay. So is this a nonprofit or for profit? So we're for profit. We're a social enterprise. Okay, social we're looking enterprise. to establish a nonprofit arm. I mean, I think that social enterprises are are awesome. I think you're absolutely, you absolutely could stay a, a for profit if you wanted to. You know, I would just say working through how you contract with the government and large entities, and you know how you get your how you are um, work on a contractual basis to yes. get capital for this is probably the biggest thing. Like, who are these women? And this is gonna, this is not going to sound the most favorable when I say it. Yes. Right. Who is incarceration a a a, a burden for? Right. Mm -hmm. So so when people return, who are returning citizens are considered? I would say not in real like they're not a burden, but they're considered a burden for who? Is that local economic development, and is that the local government? So if the local mm -hmm. government is like we have these people who are now counted as unemployed, but they need to get back to work. They yes. have bears. Is that workforce development? Like now this is a workforce development program. You can absolutely be a for-profit entity um, yes. and work through. Do you get, do you have workforce development contracts? So we're working through that um, right now with COVID. It's just been quite a challenge, even getting the women to come because they're not, they're not being referred as uh, like they were. Um, a couple years ago. So, but yes, we are considered a workforce development. And one of the things that I, I did mention, and Matt and I talked about it a little bit, we are situated here on a farm. So through our, our partnership with the farm, um, they do have opportunities um, for other employment once they leave our organization after that one year. So yeah, it is definitely considered a workforce development that's being initiative that's being developed. It, there, it's a lot of moving parts that mm -hmm. we're working through right now. It is a lot of moving parts for sure. How do I support you so that you don't get fatigued um, by the process? Because I used to work for, in workforce development. I was a program manager over a multi-million dollar program. And I, I know firsthand the way that people make money off of poverty. And, um, and I'm saying it to say, you know, finding somebody like you who actually does care about these women and care about local families and economic development. Often, oftentimes, we it, people who who care the most end up being fatigued by the process, and then tapping out of working with the government or tapping out of working with some you know some folks that would like in the workforce development realm. Because when you're a new player, it's a little bit more challenging to get in and get those like four million dollar, five million dollar contracts that you can execute on. It has been quite a challenge for us, Shelley. I mean, as a small organization looking for growth and looking at, you know, at, at 
various contracts. It, I mean, it's when you're at the bottom of the totem pole trying to, you know, find your way. And then we constantly have to prove ourselves as well. So we're looking at restructuring our organization, bringing on additional team members who have that area of expertise okay. who've worked in those fields. Um, I certainly don't know everything, but I do know that I have a passion to make a difference and make an impact in the lives of, of the women who are coming home. But I also know that I need sustainability in order for us to continue to make this impact. So we're just looking at how we can restructure the organization. COVID has taught us a lot. We know that, you know, we have been um, trying to be sustainable, just selling our handbags. We've had mm. to move into other markets. Mm. You know, the ladies are learning to create. We have Lucy, who's upstairs, our designer. She was away three years and she's come home. She's now our, our designer. So we do everything from T-shirts to coffee mugs to a variety of different um, specialty products. So we're just looking at how we can restructure, reorganize the company, tap into some of those resources, financial resources that are available so that we can continue with our mission of empowering the women when they return to the community. It's been a challenge. COVID has made it very challenging, but we're, we're very steadfast and looking um, at other opportunities. I wonder how you break into the high-end market because like these bags are one-offs. Right. They're yeah. created by hand by the women in the program. So there's not they're not being duplicated. And I wonder how you would journey into looking at them as art versus looking at them as just handbags you carry every day. But actually being like, you know, these are art pieces that can be purchased. I mean, now granted, the women may not continue to create. So this you could also cheer out your program. Like if you have a woman that has a strong interest in it, who's saying like, I don't just want to create one. I love this process so much. I actually want to become a bag designer and I actually want yeah. to create more than one. If you have people like that, it may be worth it for them to, for their particular bag to be viewed as an art piece or as a, like an exclusive piece, just because yeah. if they continue to create, they could potentially become there that piece of art could potentially become an appreciating asset that if I were to buy that today you know two years five years from now this person pops off lands a bag mm -hmm. with somebody famous or whatever and now yes. I have this bag by this person so my other question is like again impact are you turning them into artisans or or is this just like on the path to like what's the percentage of people who who like then decide to be creatives ongoing like do you have any numbers on that so what this is you know that's interesting because what we're looking to do um is is actually start another uh piece of the the program which be which would be entrepreneurships um a couple of the ladies like lucy before she went to prison she had her own business so and then we have toya who went while in prison she um would make somehow transform her um what do you call them? The, um, the, the long johns that they would wear during the winter into really cool jumpsuits that she brought here. And so she wants to start a, um, a prison line of, of clothing. So those are some of the things we, we, we do listen to the voice of the ladies and kind of identify what they want to do. And we're looking at ways that we can incorporate that into what we're doing. A lot of the ladies who transition out, they're really not doing the creative thing, although one of them is still doing, but they're getting involved with things like Michigan Liberation and actually helping to make a difference, um, you know, in the lives of other people through the, uh, you know, through the justice systems. But we do want to try and um, look at how we might be able to extend that creativity with the ladies that we currently have. We have Lucy, who was part of the horticultural program and being here on the farm, we have a garden outside. Lucy is actually going to do a farm to table type demonstration, mm. uh, Facebook Live and show people how you may not have a lot of money, but you can make fresh pasta, you know, from scratch. So we're, um, after this, we're going to meet and discuss how she wants to do that. We had a, a brunch with the butterflies, which was Lucy's idea. Yeah, so we're taking cool. their ideas and, um, you know, incorporating them. And they're really a part of what we're doing and, and expanding some of the things that we're looking to offer the community. Well, what, um, tell me about you. Cause I also didn't see a lot of you reflected in this. So there, there's, there's, I think 
your pitch is is informative. It's yeah. not it's not a access to capital pitch though. Yeah. So yeah. because what I want to hear and I and, and the way I want you to I can imagine one, I want to stop and acknowledge that I can imagine that COVID has been tough. It's uh, been with cheap. this business and that it has taken a toll. And but I love also want to acknowledge your resilience and how yeah. you're, you know, have decided to move to different products and open up other lines of your business. What what I think is interesting though is that this is not just a nice thing to do. Like you, this works. And yeah. I didn't see one, why you chose to do this. I didn't see that as strongly. Yeah. And then yeah. I didn't see, oh, no, 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 no. This is not just a nice thing. Yes, people are incarcerated and they need to have transitional things. And this is what we created. And this absolutely works for people who are transitioning because of what? One, yes. you know, look at, uh, you know, Lucy, I'm just using her loosely. Yeah. Yes. Look at loose, loosely, loose, I'm using Lucy <laughs> loosely, but <laughs> look at her situation. She, you know, Lucy, blah, 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 thing happened, got lit up for this amount of time, came out, joined Bats and Butterflies, and now as a butterfly, she has accomplished X, Y, and Z, yes. and she is also now making, living a sustainable lifestyle as a high-functioning uh, member of society. Look yes. at Jessica. Meet Jessica. Jessica mm -hmm. was, you know, got wrongfully accused. I know you can make up anything, not make yes. up, but- I want real scenarios around like went here, came to us, did it, created this thing, left here, felt like X, Y, and Z. Therefore, she got into blocks yes. and now is living a sustainable um, lifestyle as a, a you know what? You don't just uh, work with returning citizens. You get citizens returned. Yes. Like that, that that's no, how I want to hear you talking about it. Like yes. our citizens have completely returned to society yeah. it's high functioning a bit you know the butterfly they have gone through their entire butterfly process and here they are high functioning members of society yeah. like we like you are an essential part of, of workforce development and economic development as a whole and community development yes right so well, what is the effects of what you do and why do you do it i'm gonna stop sharing um okay. just a little bit about my background so i I have to be just just transparent. This is not my background. So I spent um, 23 years in corporate communications. I worked for Ford Motor Company, and I've all I do some very challenging life situations myself. I had to kind of rediscover myself and reinvent myself. So someone took me under their arms and you know kind of guided my path um, and showed me that I was a creative person. So I had to use my hands. To take care of my family, you know. I mean, mm. I have to. I, that's so, how I, you need to write that down. <laughs> so, yeah. bad, like, bass and butterflies helps uh, women who have been incarcerated mm -hmm. use their hands to take care of their family. Yes, right. Yes. Like that is, I like that, and you know, and that is by creating handbags. I just want. I'm, I don't mean to interrupt. Yeah. Just want to pause you there. Yeah, that's that's no. That's this is so helpful to me. Um, Shelly, because I, you know, this is helpful, very helpful. But that, I mean, my, my but listen, wait, 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 I'm not done. Yeah. I also want to say the part that you just said about like, because somebody took me under their wing. Yes. Like yeah, they, that yeah. is your why that is yeah. you being in alignment, yes. an alignment with what it means to have different life circumstances happen to yes. you. And then have some other butterfly, Yes, you know, take you yeah. under their wing. Yes. And say, it's okay. I understand yes. you and I'm going to provide this space for you. You're providing that space. Yes. Right. Because you know what it feels. No, you might not have been incarcerated, but you no, know I what it feels like. Yes. And to you have know to deal with harsh life circumstances. Exactly. And I tell people that I've never been incarcerated or in, in, in prison, but I've been imprisoned. And it was through my journey, you know, through my journey and having someone help me channel that energy into something positive. And that's what I want to do with these ladies. I mean, we have choices. I could have chosen this way, which would have landed me in prison. Honestly, I could have been behind bars myself. But because someone took me under their wings and said, Michelle, you can use your hands to be creative. You can you can make stained glass pieces. And I never thought I had that kind of talent, but someone believed in me and I was in my 40s. So, you know, and someone took me under their wings. So that's how this all started. And 
I, the bags themselves were made for a, a totally different purpose. They were made for an art show. I worked with glass and I wanted to do something different. And around that same time that I had finished the prototype, I learned about my good friend's daughter. I've known her since sixth grade. We're in our 60s now. And so she is currently incarcerated. And she made that split second decision. And um, I just want, and I know that she's a beautiful girl. And I know that there are other beautiful women coming home who just made that, took that split second, and now their lives have been changed. And, you know, I wanted to make a difference in not only my good friend's daughter's life, but the women coming home to make a difference because someone made a difference in my life. They really did. And they had no idea how they really impacted my life. So that's where all of this comes from, Shelly. Yeah, and I think that story needs to be told. Yes, yes. You know, so this, you know, the story of like, you know, and even it, you can even incorporate it in the ways that you talked about it. So like when you say like X amount of people are incarcerated, X amount of people are returning, you can even you can say that differently. You can yes. say X amount of people made a split decision um mm -hmm. that landed them in jail, that changed yes. their life, yes. that landed them in prison for X amount of time. Yeah, and once they come home, they're experiencing X, Y, and Z. Yeah, you know, I because you working in communications for this long also counts as experience around like how to help move things forward, move people yes. forward. Communications, what yes. that means, um, that matters. How does it make money? So we sell. We we do a lot of shows. Um, we we do a lot of shows. Um, and that's where we generate the majority, most of our revenue. We are out and engaged in the community. So not only are we selling bags, but we're having an opportunity for our customers to meet the ladies face to face and have conversations with them and get to know and understand their story. We also have um, donors who've invested in us. They believe in our, our mission and they've invested in us. We have our products in some retail stores here in the Metro Detroit area. And we've, like I said, we've had to also expand our product line. So we make, we create awards for the, the Chamber of Commerce and NAACP. You make, wait, you make awards? We create awards. Yeah, we create beautiful crystal awards. We do, we have a machine. We have a machine. I need where some awards FD. created. Can you create well, we me some awards? We can certainly do that. Yeah, we can certainly do that. I can email you some photos of what we did for the um, Chamber of Commerce. So we, oh my we God. Do. I wish, I'm we so glad you told me that. <laughs> We do a lot. We do a lot here in this in the butterfly house here. And like I said, we've had to pivot. I mean, we we've been making awards for quite some time, but the T-shirts and the coffee mugs and the, um, the booklets and all these other things that we're creating, that's that's fairly new. Because, you we know, well, what's too. interesting is I was thinking like um, some of the things could actually be um, like some of the pieces very much look like keepsakes for me to me you yeah, know and like so, yeah. go ahead i'm sorry well, no i was going to say when we go out and we're out and engaged in the community we let them know that if you don't carry a handbag then it's definitely a jewelry box or it's a keepsake box i mean it's whatever it's a decorative art piece for your home or office and um you know it, i mean something that can be passed down from generation to generation so yeah they're definitely decorative art pieces now, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So the pieces that you have here, like these, how are you teaching them to create? Like some of these have like intricate, uh, like on the front, they have like very intricate shaping into the yes. wood. Yes. So what we do, we, we use repurposed wood and we have a, a laser cutter. So Lucy's actually learning to use the laser cutter. So those pieces can be recreated, but any of the, the pieces that have the, the colors, you know, the various colors we're uploading. We just finished a, a bunch of pieces, um, over the weekend. Those are going to be uploaded. Those are all one of a kind pieces but we there and, and the beauty of it is Lucy is in design school she's in school for graphic design so she's able to use all the the skill sets and everything that she's learning right here you know to you know as part of her job and she was really excited she's learned a whole new um, software program that she had no she, she was really intimidated about using it at first but now she's mastered it and she's been with us since November so, but yeah, a lot of those intricate designs, 
they do require computer experience. And those are some of the, the skill sets that the ladies are learning while they're here. Yeah, I think um, how many of these can you pump out? So so because I also think like a matter of like how to make as much revenue. Mm -hmm. One, I wonder if we could get um, you, you may need a little bit of brand support. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not sure if these images give the best light to the actual bag. Also, like a couple of the images I'm looking at the website, badsandbutterflies.com. And a couple of the images are, um, are, are, I don't, I think maybe trying to showcase the in intricacy of the design. So it's not mm -hmm. as zoomed out. You also don't have mm -hmm. them with the ones on the shopping side of things are not in anyone's hand. So like having yeah. them in someone's hand or having them be more lifestyle. Um, do you use Instagram? We're on Inst uh, we are on Instagram. We had it, someone actually doing that for us. <laughs> and yeah, so I don't know how up to date it is, but we um what we're really excited about is that we've had some really good partnerships like with the Delta sorority. They've kind of taken us under their wings and they're really passionate about what we do. So we were able to make custom bags for their president and some of their team members. And then, you know, we're doing um, things where we can also engage the community and bring them into our space here on the farm. So we did uh, Butterfly Dreams, which was a, um, we've got to upload those photos, where the ladies could come in and create their own handbag, a leather handbag, and um, identify their dreams and write their dreams inside the bag. So we've got to get... Yes, that was, that I was, so do you have a large uh how many um how many customers have you had so how long have you been around so this is our fifth year so we've been how many five years how many customers have you had oh my gosh we've had over about 300 about 300 customers how are you getting them to buy more and more bags so well you know when we when we go out to the, the various events, we have people coming back because we do have new products that we've been pushing out. And um, we have we've had some who buy um, the bags from for weddings. One lady bought seven of our bags for her daughter's uh, wedding party. So it, and what but like I said, what we're doing now is introducing some of the other services that we we offer. Um, you know, we just we're doing a large quantity of T-shirts for um, Juneteenth and um, coffee mugs and, and all kinds of other cool things that we're doing okay. to kind of offset that revenue. OK, OK. All right. That sounds good. Um, I like it. The reason why I was asking is because like that's how you keep your revenue going. Yeah, so I think just like getting more and more and more revenue in. Um, yeah. I would inv definitely invest in some some branding help, uh, maybe like a, a facelift to your website and a little yes. bit of um, and I mean if if that's possible, I don't know where you are like you know capital wise. Yeah, if I had to, if I had to go make some capital real quick, I can give you what my plan would be. Like if I was like I need to because you you have a decent pricing on your products. I don't know what your <laughs> I don't know what your um what your margins are, yeah. but you have a really great. Your products are a decent price. So mm -hmm. if I were you and I was going to try to make a quick 5K, first thing I would do is I would take maybe three to five bags that you can recreate more than one of. Yeah. Right? And I would try to get everyone that has bought a bag that is similar to buy rebuy another one. Mm -hmm. So, like, just buy a bag. We don't necessarily need them to go and do buy a bunch of them at once. We just like, hey, you know, and it could be a little discount. It could be free shipping. You'd yes. be surprised. You know yes. what? People love free shipping more than they love a discount. And it's weird yeah. because actually shipping doesn't cost that much. And I'm like, right. I'm giving y'all, you know, a discount. They're like, nah, we'd rather have free shipping. It's crazy. Yeah. When I was selling well, products, I would see that. So I think that's, I think that would be one thing I would do is I would try to figure out out of 300 people, how many people can I get to go and buy one more bag? Mm -hmm. Right, because your bags are maybe the the lowest one I saw is about seventy five dollars, which makes sense. It's, yeah. Hand, yeah. it's handcrafted, you know. Trying to get if you could get a hundred people to go buy, if you can go get a hundred people to just buy one more seventy five dollar bag, how much would that be? Seventy five. That'd be seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think that if if you have the the thing is though. 
if you have the inventory for that. Because if you don't yeah. have the inventory for that, then we do. And one of the other things, come and say hi to Lucy. Um, one of the one of the things that we um, that we're doing to generate revenue, which has been very successful, we are we have this adopt a butterfly campaign. And so the butterflies are actually handmade. The ladies make the butterflies. They're inside of a, a, a pillow box. We call it the chrysalis. And it comes with an adoption certificate. So we've really been pushing those um, adopt a butterfly for those. Like we were at an event a couple weeks ago and people were like, oh, well, you know, we don't, I don't carry a handbag, but they adopted four or five butterflies and they're like $10 each. So that what does that do? Well, that, that for one, it helps us with the, with, with um, generating revenue, but the butterflies themselves, they're multifunctional. So you can add a string, you can spray your favorite fragrance. It's an air freshener. You can add a butter, add a, um, a rhinestone or a um, pearl bobby pin, bobby clip, and you add it to your hair. So people have been eating those up. And the beauty of it is you don't know which butterfly you've gotten, you've adopted until you open up the, the pillow box. It's like in a little pillow box. Like we call and they're it the only pillow. $10. They're $10. Yeah. The Why regular are they price. only $10? Well, you know, it only costs us like, what, five cents to make. And um, we just, we, we have it on our website for $20. And people think they're getting a sale at $10. So they've been buying them up. They buy them eight, five, eight, eight at a time, you know, for $10. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's cool, but yeah. that's not making you a whole lot of money. So like, right. yes to that. Yes, we yeah. want them to keep doing that. Yeah. And if anything, maybe incentivize them with the purse. So it's like, okay, well, like you get your, you know, if you buy this purse, you also get your, uh, your butterfly, right. yes. you know, with yeah. it. Now that's and that's a deal. Right, like yes. you get this, yes. the mask to match your bag, and a butterfly. Yeah. Like, if yes. I got a mask to match my bag, and it's a one of a kind bag, yeah. like, come on, yeah. right? So, yeah. like, you know, you may you may come up with a bundle that will help you sell to get some some capital. Because, like, you are so. I, I want you to also consider, you know, muddle over this, journal about it, and think about it. Is like, it's great that you're doing a great thing, but you mm-hmm. are a for profit. Yes. So you're doing a great thing and you're making revenue. The more money yes. you make, the more good you can do. Yeah. The more good you can do, yeah. the more money you make. And yeah. all those things are okay to go together. So yes, yes this is cause uh, centric. At the same mm-hmm. time, you have products to sell. Yeah. So you, the longer you have those products in your closet or in your inventory, the more yeah. money you're not making and the more people you're right. not helping. Yes. Right. Yes. So it's like yes. these and you're helping people in a real way. That's not like, oh, I gave 50 percent of my revenue to yes. like, no, 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 no. You are right. real time yes. giving people skills, giving them yes. jobs, giving them confidence, affirming yes. their ability to do like this is how I want you talking about it. Like you're not just yes. like people are coming back home and they need something to do. Yes. So I'm, no, 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 no. Yeah. You are affirming that they are worthy of creating something that people will buy, that they are worthy yes. Of of using their hands to strength to support their families, like you yeah. are affirming their confidence and building within them the skills. You're giving them a life coach. You're introducing them to horticulture. You are yes. on a farm, and they can have uh, several opportunities for jobs. You have yes. created an entire ecosystem of yes. what it means to transition. Yes, yeah, right. Like what it means to transition. Soon, you also will be able to journey into people who are at risk. Mm -hmm. So you may catch people right before they get a longer sentence. You may enter into the court system in a way that says, I'm going to, for your part of your program, you got to go to Bass the Butterflies, right? Like Mm -hmm. you, you could assert yourself in that way because you're like, not only we could actually prevent people from going to prison. Cause see, part so while I think there is capital in the returning citizen realm and the contracts and that kind of thing, your story is actually that somebody kept you from going to prison. Yes. Yes. So I would empower and encourage you to also think about the lane of business that is at risk Mm -hmm. and, and not at risk youth as in youth. Like you don't have to go to like middle school, but you could go to like upper high school you know, you could go 18 to 24. You could go um, people who have been in the ju- juvenile system but are adults, 
right? And and are at right. risk of going to prison. You could right. like you could intercede at a point in their life where they are they may go one way or the other, but they need somebody. And we've done things like that. We've partnered with Job Corps here in Detroit, and the ladies have had an opportunity to go out and speak and share their story. And it's funny because some of the the kids would come up to the ladies and their their parent, their mom may have been in prison, and the ladies know their mom and be able to tell them, "Hey, your mom's okay," or you know, I mean, it oh was, my god, so, you, know, where are those stories? I, I, I need like I need the people on video. Helpful. I need to be yes. like. I need them standing in front of their handbag and saying yes. like this handbag saved my life. Like I yes. like that is what you need to show Michelle. I this need these people that talking about their handbags yeah. in a way that's like this handbag saved my life. Did you, yeah. um, did you, uh, do they get anything off of the sale? They, they get a salary, so they get paid. And then what they, they also do is like when we go out to the events and things, they get, you know, a stipend from that as well. Oh, so, yeah, they get a salary. Wow. They, they get, yeah, so they do get paid. They get a salary. They get paid every day. They're W-2 employees. <laughs> wow. So they get, they, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that is amazing. They come to work yeah. at Bass so, and Butterflies. Yeah. So they come to work in the realm of, so and this is what i didn't get from the pitch like yeah. what you're saying is you hire returning citizens yes. help them through their transition by giving them avenues to create garden work on in farming learn new skills get life coaching find a new community and then they and then they can go on to another job or role that's better for yeah. them but you are actually transitioning them like i said you're getting yeah. them returned Yes. Like it's not, it's yeah. not returning. They go to a bunch of right. classes yeah, and they kind of like it. They kind of don't No, Like you actually straight out there getting a role, a job yes. that right there. I think like you should be on tops of minds for all of the officers, lawyers, court systems, for all the people where people are transitioning, everybody in the realm of transitioning, everybody in the realm of release. Yes. So these are the people that you need to find you in your network. The people who focus on, sentencing mm -hmm. the people who focus on releasing you know i i if you could find people who are even on parole boards and probation officers yes and we're yeah probation we're officers are like a key target for you yep. you have uh oh i'm not gonna say this right but you have like primary customers and you have what's called like secondary customers yeah when you yes. are selling a toy you're not selling a toy i'm using this as an example when yep. you are selling a toy your customer is the child mm -hmm. but you're the person who buys the toy is yeah. the parent the adult yeah so yeah. you're marketing to the parent such so that the child and then you're marketing back you could have marketing ever said to the child too so your thing is kind of similar mm -hmm. well like your target for who buys in is a particular group mm -hmm. but the people who benefit from the that thing being in existence is another group and you could actually yes. create marketing efforts around each and then yeah. people who have been um you could also break this into verticals so you could go you could find organizations that focus on gun violence and mm -hmm. you could find people who've been locked up for gun violence right and you could say i'm going to take a vertical of women who have, who have been affected by have been imprisoned because of gun violence and this is going to be this line of bags. And then you create a name behind that transition. So yes. Bass and Butterflies is the whole thing. But the transitional yeah. line for people who have been rehabilitated from, from uh, being a yeah. part of witnessing, reacting to gun violence, therefore imprisoned, are returning. And here is their, here is their arc of transformation. I love it. Right? I like you it. get to show a full arc of transformation throughout somebody's life. You could do that. You could be domestic violence. Yes. Women who have gotten, you know, arrested. Here's a full arc of women who have transitioned through being a part of, reacting to, affected by the domestic mm -hmm. violence, therefore imprisoned. Here's the arc of their yeah. transformation. Here's their story. Every cool. handbag should have a story on a card inside of it. And we do. With each, okay. each bag, we get to meet the designer. So inside of each bag... There's a photo of the the designer. It has their story on it. And then on the back, it talks about, we, we 
Typically, the ladies select a gift. They would make a gift that would go inside the bag in appreciation of supporting our mission. But we, um, we do put the cards in there. Each person, each designer, each person who created the bag, their story goes inside the bag. So I would have start using social media for that. Yes. Have the have the person that got their bag shipped with the story inside, you know, ask them if they'd be willing to, you know, go live on your social media with the yeah. person who designed the bag yeah, and nice. they talk to each other. Good you know, idea. you could also use this as video segments for like um, if you were to bring like if people were local and you ask them, like, would you be willing to come in and meet your designer? Like oh, and they nice. come in and you videotape the interaction and it could just be them sitting across from each that. other. You know, and that person it. listening to each other. Like, you have the ability to create so much content to really make people buy these bags and mm-hmm. continue to engage with your brand. Yes, this is good. And, you know, we we did hire someone who was supposed to be doing that. And it's, it, it's not always a good fit, you know. So this is good. This is good. Yeah. Very good. Very yeah. good. Was there anything that you had particular questions about as we get, as we wrap? No, this wanna... is this is awesome. It really makes me think a lot of more about my pitch and how I can enhance it to include what you, you know the information that you've shared and um, yeah to make it a little bit more engaging and tell the full story because I'm telling little bits and pieces and not the full story. So I'm act- actually going to go through and revamp it completely. And this is a business. Yeah. So make sure you're communicating it like it's a business. It's a business yes. where revenue, employees. Yes. Over, yeah. you know, like you're making capital and yeah. you're helping people and you absolutely yeah. should be doing that. Right. And like yeah. all business should be doing that. So you might have impact investors that will eat this up, but you got to yeah. be communicating the returns. Exactly. And, so, yeah. and, and if you have other things for them to make, because again, you're turning them into artisans, not yes. just handbag makers. Right. So I think exactly. you focus on the handbags because there's a main thing, but it's right. like, you know, if they are making awards, if they're making like, you could actually have companies that say like, oh, wow, we're going to have them make our awards because mm-hmm. it's also going to be like women who are incarcerated being able to rehabilitate, you know, and mm-hmm. keep this program going. And that's what we've been doing. I to, I reach out to, you know, organizations that I know have events every year. And that's how we've been getting a lot of those contracts. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of folks don't know that we do that. And once they do, they come back every single year. So it's been great. That piece has yeah. been really good. Yeah. So Shelly, thank right. you. This was awesome. I'm so glad we were able to do this. I like your new hairstyle too. It's cute. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah, I'm so glad. Thank you. thank you so much for, for joining. Thanks for joining us, Disruptors. And congratulations. You have taken another step toward being friggin' amazing. Make sure you visit us at adoseofdisruption.com where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or via RSS feed. Rate and subscribe if you're all the way live. Rate and subscribe if you're all the way live. That's right. Tell a friend, rate and subscribe to keep us all the way live. Come back next week so we can disrupt some more shit.